Chaotic closing moments at the Minnesota State Fair Monday night. St. Paul police say a woman was hit by a car. Then three people were shot outside the main gate. Police gave an update overnight. Care 11's Alex Hagen is live outside the fairgrounds with that. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Chris and Gia. Well, police say this happening just as the gates were closing here at the Minnesota State Fair here along Snelling Avenue. People leaving the fair and officers told us earlier this morning that so many people were at risk. They call this shockingly brazen. Now, police say just after 10 Monday night, they responded to a pedestrian crash. Police found a 19 year old woman gravely injured here along Snelling Avenue after she was hit by a car. Witnesses say there had been a fight in the area just before she was hit. A short time later, they say they heard several gunshots south of the crash. A man was found shot and transported to Regions Hospital. And police say two others arrived at area hospitals with gunshot wounds as well. All three are expected to be OK. And it's unclear at this time if that crash and this shooting is connected. We spoke with several people who left the State Fair and witnessed all this chaos. Shocking. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever have to scramble to get my retired mother away from gunfire while waiting for one of the park and ride buses to leave the state fair. So it's kind of heartbreaking and angering. I'm a little angry too. Now police say the driver of that car who hit that woman initially left the scene, then called 911. We're told that driver is cooperating with investigators. No signs of impairment at this time. As for the shooting, police say there are no suspects at this time. They're asking anyone with any information to call police. Back to you. Scary moments for sure. All right, thanks, Alex. We'll check back in with you for the latest in the next half hour. Also breaking this morning, new information coming in about a deadly shooting on the east side of St. Paul. It happened last night on Ivy Avenue. That's in the Prosperity Heights neighborhood. This was the scene around nine last night. Police tell us one man was shot and killed. Right now, they are trying to find who pulled the trigger. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. St. Paul police tell us this is the 15th homicide of the year. With still four months left in 2019, Team that put St. Paul on pace to have more than the 17 homicides they saw all of last year. Police also tell us around 105 people have been shot in St. Paul this year alone. And now we're taking you live from Florida this morning. The surge is starting as Hurricane Dorian slowly makes its way up the Atlantic coast. Overnight, Dorian was downgraded to a Category 3 hurricane, but the storm already left its mark on the Bahamas. Take a look at this video. The storm surge in some areas reaching nearly two stories high. That is enough to swallow entire homes. We're learning at least five people are dead in the Abaco Islands. The Bahamian Prime Minister says he's concerned about the flooding over the next few days. And Laura, this storm could also cause serious flooding in the southeast, right? That's right. Really all up the Atlantic coast is where we'll be watching this storm track. Even though it's been downgraded to a category three hurricane, still a very strong storm and one of the key points still moving very slowly as a category five hurricane at less than a mile per hour at some point, uh, just devastating the Bahamas. It will start to turn north and eventually northeast through this weekend into the weekend, making its way up to Nova Scotia. Our best chance for any landfall here in the U.S. will be Friday morning, uh, likely as a category two hurricane coming very close to the outer banks of North Carolina. And Laura, we've really been watching what's happening with this storm through social media. Here are some of the latest images from Dorian in our digital dive on the snap map here. If you zoom in on the Bahamas, a lot of folks there sharing images of what they're seeing from their home. This is out of Lakaya, out of the Bahamas. A lot of boats overturned, houses there, cars completely destroyed. And as uh, Dorian makes its way towards the eastern coastline here, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, a lot of uh, people there uh, sharing images as well. A lot of high waves uh, not far from Boca Raton and Fort Lauderdale. Same thing, folks, uh, just kind of gearing up uh, for Dorian to inch closer to that eastern seaboard. Let's give you a look at other videos from the Bahamas. Yesterday we showed you the island of Abaco completely destroyed. People there right now still searching for shelters after much of their community was some of the hardest hit thus far. According to initial reports, five people on this island have died as a result of this deadly storm. And as we mentioned, the storm has weakened to a category three hurricane, but that doesn't mean people living along the southeastern coast will be out of the water just yet. Much more on Hurricane Dorian coming up on the Today Show. You can catch the latest track and destruction left behind starting at seven coming up right after sunrise. 
Here's a look at today's other big stories in your morning rush. Police are trying to figure out how a bicyclist was hit and killed by a light rail train in South Minneapolis. It happened just after nine last night near the 38th Street station. Metro Transit tells us a man died at the scene. The Blue Line service was closed for about an hour. You probably could have guessed this. The Minnesota Park and Recreation Board says contaminated water led to a record number of beach closures this summer. Half of the city's 12 beaches were not safe enough for swimming. Right now, five are still closed because of E. coli. Officials say heavy rain is to blame. Bad news for Metro shoppers who love a good bargain. Two big box discount stores are leaving St. Paul in the next few months. Sears announced it will close its Maryland Avenue Kmart store in December, as well as a Kmart in International Falls. This comes just days after Walmart announced it will close its only remaining St. Paul store in November. Will you be part of making history at the great Minnesota get together? If you went to the fair this year, you couldn't miss just how huge the crowds were. On Sunday, 245,243 people were at the fairgrounds. That helped put us well on track to break the all-time attendance record set in 2018. We'll learn the final numbers later today. And that's your Tuesday Morning Rush. Kids, parents, the time has come. If you haven't started already, today's the day you're back to school. And there's always something new at the start of the school year, but for some kids, everything will be new, including the school. And it just so happens to have the perfect name. Kaya, live at the new Sunrise Elementary in Blaine. Hi, Kaya. Well, hello and welcome to Sunrise, Sunrisers. We've been checking in with you throughout the morning and it doesn't get old. So far, we are starting to see employees arrive, but we still got a couple of hours until the students get here. So in the meantime, let's show you inside of this new building and talk about what's new at this new school. This is part of the Anoka Hennepin School District. It's one of two new elementary schools that the district's opening up today. The superintendent says they needed more schools, considering the fact that this is the fat one of the fastest, largest growing school districts in the entire state. And now, in addition to having more space, they're able to test out different things before they put them into existing schools. So things like new furniture, upgraded windows, and a big one, flexible teaching learning spaces. Those are basically rooms, open rooms, where collaboration is encouraged. Having that space to stretch out and give kids flexible places to learn is very valuable. And our schools that were crowded, uh, we just couldn't do the, the types of intervention or enrichment that students needed. This next year we'll have that space. And the superintendent says they do plan to add those kinds of spaces to all schools in the districts, elementary, middle, and high schools. Reporting live from Sunrise Elementary, Kaya Edwards, CARE 11 Sunrise. Hey, that's very <laughs> official, and because you're so good at this, we'll check back and meet with you in about 30 minutes' time, Kaya. Oh, we sure do love that name. Right now, let's go out to Sven with our One Thing Weather as he gets ready to get on the bus. Yes, amidst the roar of the engines. Yeah, we're going to be doing our, our pre-check of the bus pretty soon here in a few minutes and getting on. But uh, one thing you need to know about the weather this morning, it is dry. That's the good news. All those storms gone. Skies are clear overhead here in beautiful St. Louis Park at the park garage. So, yeah, should be nice weather out of the bus stop. And uh, this just in literally the, the cop car pulled away 35 East southbound looks like all lanes are back open. This is at Grand Avenue. A crash investigation has been underway for well over an hour there. Drive times though people though still really backed up all the way to university. So you still want to avoid 35 East southbound this morning uh, because of that current backup. Uh, so detour options. Highway 5 is looking much better to avoid sitting in traffic along 35 East. All right, thanks for that, Alicia. Still a lot of questions this morning about a deadly boat fire in California. What the investigators are searching for now that the flames are gone. A student given a lot more than he bargained for. The life or death decision in the sky during his first flying lesson. Hands-free laws now in effect and school is back in session. At 645, we'll tell you how officers are using this law to keep your kids safe.